All right, welcome back. And so now we are going to spend some time on understanding and going a little bit more into some of those tools like we talked about uh, where we're uh, looking at the picture profiles and looking at the histograms and things like that. So just like a camera, uh, the app has a lot of features that your native app is not going to have, right? So I think the first thing that we need to talk about is going to be ISO and shutter. Now, the cool thing about the app is it's going to allow you to essentially uh, lock in the ISO and the shutter. Uh, so if you've ever saw any of the native iPhone apps where you're not getting a motion blur, uh, it's really just um, uh, very perfect, right? You're not getting that wave. That's because the phone is automatically adjusting the ISO and the shutter uh, because it's trying to get the best picture quality for what it's trying to do, right? So here it's going to allow us to essentially change that information, uh, right? So uh, rule of thumb, if you are shooting at 24, you all wanna go double, right? So for example, as you can see here, I am shooting at 4K at 24, and so I want my shutter to be at one over 48th, right? Which is double. Uh, same thing applies with uh, when I go doing slow motion. So if I'm doing 120, it's gonna be 240. And if I'm doing 240, it's gonna be 480. And those are things that I can adjust as I want. Uh, you have to lock them in order for you to adjust one only. So I can go here and start adjusting the way that I want, right? So, but for this right here, we're gonna go one over 48. And then here is where we're going to adjust our ISO, right? Me, personally, when I film, I wanna have my ISO at the lowest possible to reduce the, the most amount of noise when it comes to the picture. That's where lights are gonna come in, natural light's gonna come in, uh, you know, you'll play with that to be able to bring that additional light because as you're bringing that ISO down, it's going to essentially make it darker, right? <clears throat> so there goes your um, ISO and your shutter. So now that we've talked about that, we can go into the histogram. Now, if you're new to filmmaking, histograms is going to essentially give you in a um, diagram from the left, your darkest points and your lights uh, are gonna be on the right. So, uh, so for example, if I start adjusting here, as you can see, it's getting lighter, that histogram is going to change based on that, right? If I were to just put my hand completely here, you're gonna see that all my histogram is on to the left. I have no information, it's clipping, so I'm losing information. And then the same thing is going to apply when we're bringing light in. So for example, if I were to open up this window, you know, I'm gonna introduce more light into the shots. Uh, if I were to start increasing my ISO, as you can see now, I'm all the way to the right, I'm clipping my lights. So I have no, you know, there's no darks right there. I'm losing a lot of information. And so I wanna make sure that I'll adjust. So for example, even with that nitro light, if I wanted to bring in that ISO just a little bit more, I could, and then I have a nice balanced shot. And the same thing is gonna be with the RGBs. You know, essentially it's just going to give you that histogram and then the layers of colors and where those colors are sitting uh, based on uh, what you're using right there. And so we're back here uh, to that. And then the next one is the waveform. Now the waveform is gonna work a little bit different if you're new to filmmaking because it's going to essentially start from bottom to top, meaning that everything Below zero, you've lost, and then everything above 100, you've lost that information too. Uh, so the waveform is really neat because 
uh, it, it essentially gets tracked, right? So if I'm in front of my subject, right, or if I'm the subject right here, uh, you can see uh, that that waveform is kind of not shaping to what I look like, but it just kind of gives you an idea of where uh, from the zero to 100, you know, waveform I'm going to be at. So it's a really nice feature. If I were to put my hand, you can kind of see it, the waveform kind of moving based on you know where my hand is so uh, that's a nice feature right there being able to understand these is extremely important you know when i first started filmmaking yes there's videos on histograms yes there's videos on waveforms but i've really never seen um, a video on filmic pro where we're going over these type of settings, which I think is extremely important, especially if you're recording from your phone. You wanna have from the source the best available um, data. So when you take it into post and put it into DaVinci or Final Cut Pro or LumaFusion or whatever other software you use, you're being able to use the most amount of information and data that is usable, that is not clipped. Uh, that you're not losing information because it's underexposed or overexposed. So I think those are extremely important for us to understand. So now that we have that, uh, I will go into picture profiles. Now, when it comes to picture profiles, natural is going to be what comes out of the camera. You have linear, uh, then you have HLG, and then you have V-Log. What you're also gonna pay, you're gonna pay attention here is that it's at 10 bit right now. If I were to go back to my settings and I were to put it at 8 bit, when I come here, it's going to say 8 bit and now it has changed from log V3 to log V2. So just something to always kind of uh, remember whenever you're doing any type of videos, you always wanna create a checklist Man, I am so guilty of always forgetting to do these little checks. And then when I go back, I record it at an 8-bit when I should have recorded it at 10-bit. So I've lost a little information. So it is frustrating. It is what it is. But if you can create some routines to be able to uh, remember that, that's going to be great. So I'll go back into the settings and the resolution. And then I will go to 10-bit again. So I record everything in log when it comes to using Filmic Pro. And as a matter of fact, on Filmic Pro, they actually have a LUT that will convert V-Log into different picture profiles. So I highly recommend downloading those. They're absolutely free. I use them because it just gives you right there off the bat, you know, maybe you do some color corrections and things of, of that nature, and then that will take care of that. And then once again, now we get into the shadows. As I start, as you can see, if I feel like I have too much shadows or not enough shadows, I can essentially, you know, bring that in. But remember, as I bring in more information with the shadows, I'm going to be introducing more noise. You know, so that's something that you want to kind of keep in mind. Same thing with the highlights, you know. And then if you hit the little restart, it just brings everything in. And then if, if you want, you can go directly into the shadows and then adjust here. Um, Filmic, Filmic Pro does a really good job of being able to uh, get this information correct. So I typically leave that information uh, normal and I'm really just adjusting uh, my, my shutter and my ISO, like for example, I'm bringing it to 24. This is now being uh, shot at V log three. So I'll give you some ideas. V log three. You have HLG. Linear. and then natural. So those are your four settings that you are allowed to dial in in Filmic Pro. 
So once again, for me, I like to record everything in Log V3. It's going to give me a flat picture profile that's going to allow me essentially to uh, go in post in Filmic Pro, in um, DaVinci, or in Final Cut Pro or LumaFusion, and bring those colors in. And as a matter of fact, LumaFusion has that LUT already directly inside of the app if you use LumaFusion. Uh, if you wanna learn more about LumaFusion, you can check out my other videos and I, I deep dive into that. So now that we understand these picture profiles, we're gonna go and we're gonna deep dive into these settings. The first one, is going to be Zebra. Uh, like I was discussing Zebra, uh, you're going to have red being overexposed where you're losing information and then a uh, blue underexposed of where, you know, you're not gonna, you, you know, you probably wanna increase. But for example, in here, it's my TV and if it's outside, if I were to open this window right here again, you're going to see that the Zebras have increased that's being overexposed. Uh, this is where um, if you, you know, you can kind of play around with your, with your uh, shutter if you wanted to, or you can get an ND filter. And once again, I actually have a video on using MD filter uh, on, this, uh, on this app. It's super cool. You can take a look at that and see how that looks. So then now, like I said, we can see that it's, it's, uh, that area is overexposed. If I were to stand here, I am most likely not overexposed. You know, I might have that where I'm not really worried about that being overexposed. I'm not looking for that information. I'm looking for the subject. Uh, if I have maybe something in the background, that might be a little bit different, but I can play around with the ISO uh, and, and kind of work those out. I can play with the shadows and the highlights uh, adjustments uh, directly on the app to make sure I get the best exposure possible. The next one is gonna be your clippings. So once again, not surprised that the window is overexposed, but once again, that means that that data is being lost. That means that their data is probably not the best or being lost also if it's underexposed. Uh, once again, if my subject is exposed, that's what I want at the end of the day. All right, so the next one is gonna be our false color. Now the false color is uh, a really interesting thing also. Green is good. So if I'm in front of the camera, you're gonna see some green on me. Green is good, red overexposed, and then once again, blue is gonna be underexposed. So really coming, going into those settings, once you've dialed in your ISO and your shutter speed, then you start going in, you start adjusting your shadows and your highlights so you can get uh, what you want exposed in your shot whenever you're filming. Next one is going to be your focal point. Now, when it comes to focal points, is the same thing. Green is always good, so you're gonna see some green outlines around uh, my face, that tells me that those are the areas that it's going to be in focus. And so that is what you always want. Uh, I've done, as I started getting used to using this app, what was very interesting is that uh, I, uh, I, under, I, I didn't focus when I was supposed to, right? And, and that was just, it came over with time. And so, but you know, that's gonna pretty much, I believe, uh, wrap up our videos. We went over the histograms. We went over, yeah, we went over the histograms. We went over the uh, waveforms. We went over the RGB histograms. Uh, we hit up uh, the picture profiles and what were available from log V3, HLG, uh, linear, and natural. We went over the shadows and the highlights. Uh, and then at the same time, we kind of touched on uh, color temperature in the prior video, but here is once again where you can dial in those color temperatures uh, depending on what you're trying to get and you have some presets there and you can also create your custom presets. Uh, but yeah, that's going to wrap up this video guys. I really hope that you guys are getting a lot from these videos. If you have any questions uh, or any comments, you know, leave them below. 
I'll be more than happy to answer them, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.